Extra, extra, read all about it. Fannie Mae guidelines have changed. This is awesome, newsworthy news. We interrupt your regularly scheduled broadcast to bring you this emergency alert from the FNMA. New 5% down payment requirements for house hackers going live. We return you to your regularly scheduled broadcast. But before we get into it, today's Mortgage Monday sponsor is Monetary Metals. Sponsors like these help us make shows every week so you guys can stay ahead in your investing game. At some point, you've probably considered buying gold or silver as an inflation hedge or to add some stability to your portfolio. But unlike rentals, metals don't make you any passive income. Until now. With Monetary Metals, you can own gold and silver while earning up to 5% per year on it, paid in ounces. First, open up an account with Monetary Metals. Next, choose which qualified business you want to lease the metals to. And third, earn passive income. If you're an accredited investor, you can even earn double digit returns in their bond opportunities. Don't let inflation and high interest rates erode your hard earned wealth. Diversify your holdings and earn inflation proof income with Monetary Metals, a yield in gold paid in gold. Head on over to monetary-metals.com slash big, like B-I-G, for an exclusive offer just for bigger pockets listeners. Now, back to Mortgage Mondays. Great news in the real estate market. Great news for house hackers. Great news for people that don't like mortgage insurance that never goes away. Great news for anybody who wants to make money in real estate. Have we got an announcement for you? Christian, our 5% down conventional loans back for small multifamily. They are. We are recording this literally the day that this news dropped. We are still interpreting the information, but huge kind of bombshell drop yesterday came from Fannie Mae. They dropped a a whole kind of press release, but the one that we are undoubtedly the happiest and, and most excited to see is for two, three, and four unit properties on conventional loans, not FHA, not VA, Historically, they have required 15, 20, 25% down. They are all being dropped to 5% if you're buying and occupying one of the units. And why has that not been available before? It hasn't been available because typically when you've done less than 5% down, the only option has been FHA. There's been two main ones. There's been an FHA 3.5%. And we've explained in previous episodes, if you want to check out the FHA version of Mortgage Mondays, we did an episode on that. But FHA comes with this issue called the self-sustainability rule. And basically what it means is that the rents of the property have to cover the mortgage. And when prices are high and interest rates are high, it becomes difficult because the lender actually takes a haircut. It's not just the gross rents. So they take a you know a little percentage off the top and it's hard to do it with 100%. It's even harder to do it with a smaller amount. FHA also has mortgage insurance that stays for the life of the loan. That increases your monthly payment. And the other option historically has been first-time home buyer programs called Home Ready and Home Possible that did allow for 5% down on multifamilies, but they had area median income limits. What that means is that if you make too much money, you don't qualify. And those levels that were kind of arbitrarily set uh, based on the average of the county were so low that there's no way you qualified to buy multifamily in most major metropolitan areas in the country. This product seemingly is going to fix all of those issues at the same time. So FHA loans were still something that people could use for a low down payment option on a two, three, four unit property. And that sounded great, but the problem was when you actually went to go use it, there was a self-sustainability rule, which meant that the the property basically had a cash flow even with you living in it, and a lot of them didn't. So you just couldn't use the FHA loan to buy those. And then FHA loans also, though they are great for a low down payment, they come with mortgage insurance that doesn't go away. That often doesn't get discussed when we're talking about FHA products. And you can only use one FHA loan at a time. So if you've already got an FHA loan on a property, you don't want to lose your 3 4% rate. You just can't use that to buy small multifamily, which left you with only one option. Put 15% down on a duplex, put 20% down or more on a triplex or a fourplex, and then try to make it work. And then you run out of money. So you can't keep buying these things. Good news is you now have conventional loan options. Now, what about county conforming limits? Can you describe how those work so people don't get their hopes up too high and then find out the hard way that they weren't able to buy in their neighborhood? Yeah, absolutely. Good question. And this applies to any loan product in the conforming space. So this is FHA. This is conventional. Um, This is Fannie. This is Freddie. Everything in between. If something is conforming in nature, it's going to be subject to these things we call county conforming loan limits. And they're, once again, also kind of arbitrary numbers. They're they're based on some some data and information that the uh, the counties have, but it is by county. 
So this is important. Just because you're in California doesn't mean every county is the same. Just because you're in New York doesn't mean you get the highest loan limit, right? That's not true. So depending on the one that you're in, this is a very searchable number. You just Google my county and then follow it up with county conforming loans. Los Angeles County conforming loan limit. Um, you can look it up, but the specific thing to note is that most websites will only post the single family number. These do vary by multifamily. So for instance, if you're in a county that $700,000 is your they're not even numbers like 720, let's say, is your single family home, that your lender that you maybe work with may cut you off at 720. But if you, they don't, they're not going to tell you that if you go up to a duplex, you may be able to do 900. You may be able to do 1.1 million for a triplex or 1.4 million for a quadplex, right? And that is the jumps that we typically see with these things. So there, there is limits. There's upper end limits. So, you know, you can't go buy a $35 million quadplex, right? But those numbers are pretty forgiving, and remember, it's the loan amount, not the purchase price, right? So this is after you put your down payment. They're pretty forgiving with most markets in America in terms of capability of staying underneath that loan limit. Okay. Is there PMI on these loans if you put 5% down? There is. And once again, brand new filing. So we're still deciphering. We we do understand that there will be PMI. Um, however, it's going to be PMI in the conventional standpoint of things, which means it can potentially fall out around that 78 to 80% loan to value mark that mo- for every other conventional loan will fall off. Unlike the FHA counterpart that sticks for the life of the loan. What's your thoughts or your advice for somebody who says, yeah, I don't like PMI, so I'm just going to save up till I get to 20% down and I'm going to do that instead of putting 5% down? 20% down now is not the same number it will be once you buy. That's that's my biggest argument is your $100,000 is going to mean much less in 10 years, much less. I mean, think of, I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday. Like, you remember when, when you're like six, seven years old and somebody told you they made $100,000 a year? You were like, wow. And now it's like, if you live in San Francisco, that's like arguably poverty level, <laughs> you know, like that's tough, right? I mean, if you were saving up since you were a kid and now, you know, you're, you're 30, 35 years old and you got your hundred thousand dollars. Oh my God, that's three and a half percent down on some properties nowadays, right? That's number one. Um, number two is you're missing out on tax advantages and benefits and cash flow and value add and appreciation that's happened during that. Obviously, not everybody should buy in every market, right? That's not my advice. It's not absolutely right for everybody to buy all the time. I think you should get the guidance necessary and specific to your situation before you just make a overall decision that I'm going to wait because of something as simple as PMI. So for practical numbers here, $500,000 fourplex, you put 5% down, that's 25 grand. You put 20% down, that would be a hundred grand. It takes a long time to save a hundred grand compared to $25,000, which means by the time you save that money, that property might be much more expensive and you could have lost a lot of money, including cash flow that you could have been making the whole time. Oftentimes that cash flow will be significantly more than whatever the PMI that you're having to pay is. And if you would have just bought it and paid the PMI in the same time that it would have taken you to save the hundred grand, the property might have appreciated to a point where the PMI would be dropping off around that same period of time. So we're not saying don't consider PMI. That is something to factor into your numbers, but it is often not a good reason to not buy real estate, especially if it's cash flowing. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. So if somebody wants to learn more about this loan product, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Me personally, Christian at theonebrokers.com. I'm on all social medias at the one broker. Our website's theonebrokers.com if you're looking to submit a loan application immediately. And you can find me at David Green 24 on social media. Give me a follow or davidgreen24.com. All right, Christian, thank you for your time here. This is great news for house hackers in a very difficult housing market. It's nice to get some good news every once in a while and keep following the channel. Make sure you're subscribed because we are going to be coming out with more videos about these Fannie Mae updates and how they can be used to benefit you in building your portfolio soon. This is Mortgage Mondays with Bigger Pockets. We'll see you on the next one.